My second power station was a Rock Pals. How does this one measure up to that one? Or just in general? Let's talk about it. What up, it's I from Ask Got Solar, where I like to keep solar simple. And today, let's talk about this Rock Bells portable power station. Uh, I considered this a long time ago, but I didn't. I'll tell you about that later. And what I think about this now, let's get into it. This is the Rock Pals 280 watt hour portable power station. It's called the Rock Power 300. It has a 300 watt inverter. It has a 30 watt bi-directional USB PD port. I wish that was higher. Eh. That's a bit of a pain. I've noticed while using this, one thing is really light. I like this form factor. I wasn't necessarily crazy about the looks when I first considered it, but now that I have it in hand, it's like really nice. My whole family kind of likes it. I think it's cool looking. One thing that I did notice about this is that they say press and hold the button for two seconds to turn on. So check this out. When you press it, let's see if I can get the thing off of there too. You let it go and then it turns on. It's like on a bit of a delay. Did it turn on? Yeah, it did. So. It's not quick to turn on. And what I mean is you could press and hold it for three seconds, but it turns up, it takes a little longer to turn on. That was something that just kind of caught my eye. You can turn these on with a simple press, but the AC has to be held to be turned on. You can see that it has one port. That's something that you may want to be mindful of. It has two 55, 21 ports. They are rated at, I think it's five amps. I read the booklet, <laughs> shout out to Lead Form 73 because I'll be reading booklets now. You have your stats on the bottom, the model number, the operating temperature, I believe. You even have a phone number on here and the website. Wow, it has all the specs on the bottom. That's pretty cool, I didn't know that. Yeah, operating temperature is here. It tells you about all of the stats and all that jazz. I like when power stations do that because they don't have to grab the manual to find out all of the nuances of each port and so on and so forth. You have the 5521 input port. I like that. I like 5521 for these smaller power stations. Some power stations have odd barrel size connectors. This one doesn't. It does support dual charging. So you can have solar coming in, AC coming in. You can have whatever coming in and you could charge it through the USB PD port at 30 watts. 30 watts is a little low. I'm not a, the biggest fan of that but it can charge at 72 watts. I've seen like 69 from the wall. Dual charging will get this 100 watts of input. It's like a little bit less, but 98, 97, that's 100 watts. You could charge this dip in about three hours. I think that dual charging is fantastic. Any device that has dual charging is all right with me. My last Rock Pals, which I still have, and I'm planning on giving away, I'm just figuring out the logistics on that. It charges at 80 watts. That's one of the reasons why I got that portable power station because I wanted it to be able to pull in as much solar power as possible. This one charges at 72. Now, the big drawback on this one, it does not support fast through charging. So I have talked about this on a live, but since I have this product, let's dig into it a little bit. The reason why pass through charging is important first and foremost is because it's important to be able to use your sun and pass it through into your battery, into your devices. I get that, I'm a fan of that, but I do wanna offer a difference of opinion, which is why pass-through charging may not matter for this. Now, it does support pass-through charging on the DC. <laughs> There's another downside I gotta to get to in a second. Notice what I'm pointing to. If you're not the kind of person that wants to use solar while you have the solar coming in, then that doesn't matter. If you just need to charge this to have a battery backup, that'll be fine for you. Or if you're one of those people who don't you don't, you don't work from home, you know what I mean? You just gotta have it out on a panel, pulling power through the day to use throughout the night, and pass-through charging doesn't matter as much. It is super important, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to minimize it, but I am trying to say that this could work for someone. While I'm on that, let me talk about the reason why I considered this back when I got my EcoFlow River. The EcoFlow River, I think this costs about like 180 bucks or something like that, maybe 200, maybe a little more, a little less, but back then it was like, somewhere around the same price as the EcoFlow River battery. If you follow the channel for a while, you know that if I'm gonna spend $250 on a battery, I might as well spend $250 on a power station and then use that power station to supplement the power of my EcoFlow River or another power station. It could pretty much dump out maybe 100 watts an hour of its battery capacity. The battery situation is a little bit better because it feeds in totally, but you know, let's not get into that too much. The problem here, this is not regulated. And then I, that just shot all my hopes and dreams out of the water. Essentially what that means is the voltage will drop down. It cannot provide standard amount of power to a device. Some devices, once they get lower voltage, they'll stop charging to protect 
themselves and they'll stop charging and protect the device itself. That is really bad that this is not regulated. I'm not a fan of that. With that being said, I think there's still room for somebody who would be into having a relatively affordable power station. It kind of goes back to what I said before. If your situation is a little more nuanced, then this could work for you. It's still 280 watt hours of battery capacity for less than $200 is what I've seen it. You got to check the prices. I'll put a link down below to kind of keep track of this. Oh, one of the biggest things that's starting to really matter to me is the fan. I have a bunch of power stations and I don't count my EcoFlow or my EB70. The EcoFlow is quiet. Uh, it's quiet because people complained that it was loud. So EcoFlow tweaked it so that the power, the fan does not turn on. For better or worse, they changed that. I feel like they should give you, anyway. A lot of my other power stations, I have many, the fan is kind of kind of loud and it either, like the Go Labs, it kind of like comes on and it goes off. This, I ran my lamp on it. My lamp uses about 11 watts, no sounds. That's another thing that I like about my older Rock Pals because the fan didn't turn on until it started using about 100 watts. I'm going to have to test this threshold to see when this fan comes on. But the reason why that's important to me is because I want to be able to run either my internet, my router itself, or my network terminal and have this run it separately. This is typically behind my TV or it's in my kid's room. I don't want a fan blaring just for seven watts being used or eight watts being used. So this has shown itself to be quiet. I love that about it. That's really becoming a sticking point with me. The Satechi's fan is loud. The Energizer's fan is loud. Not loud, but it's audible for the smallest load. The Go Labs is loud. The EB70 fan gets loud at a certain point. <sighs> Rock Pals, good job. Can you see a situation where pass-through charging is not important to you? Let me know down in the comments. A reason why pass-through charging is not important to me is because I have multiple power stations. So I use these things as a power dump. Rock Pals is also supposed to send me a solar panel. That solar panel has not arrived yet. Yeah. That's the Rock Pals. <laughs>